What up guys, Cole here, and what I wanna talk about today is the third sales team of your organization that nobody in the high ticket industry is talking about. So, if you can see my screen, we have the setting team, that's one of the teams. We have the closing team, that's the second team, and a lot of you guys are familiar with both of these teams, okay? The setting team, whether that's an MDR or SDR team, MDRs means marketing development rep, as in they're taking leads generated by marketing and turning that into consults. SDRs is more of the traditional, like, pure cold outreach. But regardless, the setting team is creating opportunity. They're creating consults for the closers to close. And that's exactly what the closing team is doing. They're closing those opportunities created from the setters or created from marketing, right? So these are the two teams a lot of people know about, but what's this third team nobody's talking about? Well, I'm gonna tell you right now, it's your CSM team. And I know that that means client success management team. And you might be thinking, okay, well, why is my client success management team actually a sales team? Well, in a lot of cases it is. And it's one of the biggest teams that's so important in getting a high upsell rate and a high retention for your products and services. So what this training is gonna be about is how to build a CSM team. What we're gonna cover is what is a CSM? What do they do? How do you pay them? How to construct your client journey? We're gonna talk about the difference between homogenous and non-homogenous markets and how the client journey will dif differentiate between the two. And then we're also gonna talk about the important stuff about you know, why people watch this channel, which is make more sales, make more money. We're gonna talk about maximizing upsells and retention using this team and how to double customer LTV using CSMs, okay? One thing I can tell you guys is people who buy from us, most likely about 40 to 50% of them continue on to a much larger back-end package, which increases our LTV dramatically and our profitability because it's so much easier to sell a current customer. It's not as labor or uh, money intensive to get a current customer to buy again, opposed to a total new front-end cold customer. It's way, way cheaper to just get your customers to buy from you who are already existing to buy from you again. So I'm gonna teach you how using our client success team, which for us kind of operates as our inside sales team, I'm gonna teach you how to use that team to increase your upsell conversion from front end to back end dramatically in this training and in doing so, getting your clients better results because nobody's gonna buy from you anyways if you're not getting them results in the first place. So let's start, first start off with what is a CSM? So a CSM is short for a client success manager, okay? So when clients enroll in your product or service, they're doing it to get from where they are now to where they wanna be in one way, shape, or form, okay? So again, when somebody buys anything from you, they're buying that thing because they think it's gonna help them get from where they are now to where they wanna be. So essentially, at the simplest form, a CSM, all that person's gonna help them do is experience the benefits of your product so that the prospect or the client can arrive at their desired situation more quickly and more effectively, okay? So a few examples of the importance of CSMs, and I think this is really gonna drive this point home. Let's say you buy Infusionsoft, or as a lot of people like to call it, Confusionsoft. Okay, so you get this software. If you had this software all by yourself, you'd probably not be able to install it correctly. You wouldn't have any success. And ultimately, you know, you wouldn't be able to fulfill the client journey. You wouldn't get to your desired situation, right? So your chance of installing it using it is very low. But this is why Infusionsoft has CSMs that guide you and lead you around, along the way so you can implement the software successfully. Okay, so it's helping you experience those benefits of the product through proper implementation. That's really at the end of the day what this is. Let's say you buy a course. Well, obviously if it's a DIY course, you could go through it, but inevitably as you go through it, you're gonna have some questions. So the CSM is, help you to, is there to help you guide, guide you through the roadblocks so you can get to where you wanna go faster and easier and more effective. Okay, so those are a few examples. Another example is we have a staffing and recruiting business, and instead of just giving you the sales rep, which would almost be like giving you a piece of software, instead of giving you that, we do give you the sales rep, but we also give you tons of training, tons of support, tons of coaching, tons of help in terms of management, so that that sales rep and you are set up to succeed, right? So our CSMs facilitate are done for you recruiting to help the clients get so much better results because of that. I hope that makes sense. So let's go on to the responsibilities of the CSM. Now, in order to understand the responsibilities of your CSM, you first have to map out what is the client journey of your product or service. Because if we don't know what the client journey is, if we don't know what the customer, where they're starting off versus where they wanna be, there's really no way to build the responsibilities and the KPIs of the CSMs themselves. So 
let's overview kind of a basic client journey here. Usually they're gonna purchase, there's gonna be the administrative type of onboarding, which is like the contract, forms, intake information, getting them access, logins, just the real basic common sense stuff. Then there's gonna be an onboarding call. You could do this as a group call or a one-on-one -on -one call. Uh, if you have a lot of people coming in, do group. Like one of our programs, we have a daily group call, a daily group onboarding call every single day, no matter what. Um, or if you have less clients, okay, and it's a little bit more higher touch support, I would uh, recommend doing a one-on-one -on -one onboarding call. Then what we're gonna look at is you're gonna map out different activation points for each client, okay? One of my mentors told me this a long time ago, but it's always something in terms of building client journeys I've always thought of. Essentially, a an activation point is an event that happens along the client journey that if occurs, makes the client exponentially more likely to succeed the rest of the way. Okay, and if they succeed the rest of the way, then they're more likely to retain, they're more likely to upsell, they're more likely to fill their, fulfill their payment plans, leave a testimonial or a case study or a good review, and refer you somebody else, right? So it's kind of the one thing that if done, almost creates downward momentum to where everything else becomes easier because of that. So we wanna map out what those points are for our client journey, and then the last thing is gonna be our retention or our upsell, okay? So that's a little bit arbitrary. Let me give you a really good example. Um, and I've worked with several different clients um, from a sales consulting standpoint. They're in the beauty space, who so do beauty salons. Uh, maybe it's a done for you agency for salons or um, uh, med spas or something like that, or, um, or more even of, a, even of a coaching program. So this is how their journey might look like, right? They purchase, they have the admin onboarding, all the same. Let's say they have a lot of clients, they have 100 to 200 clients coming in a month. So maybe at this point they have group onboarding to where they have a daily group onboarding call, or even in some cases I've seen multiple daily group onboarding calls. So two group onboarding calls daily. I mean, if you have that amount of volume, could be something you need. Then activation point one, is their offer repackaged, which means after the onboarding, they're gonna get some initial homework assigned, the client's gonna get some initial homework assigned to them, and what they're gonna do is they're gonna put, a, put together a rough draft of their new offer packaging based on the curriculum within the program. And then after they have the rough draft, what they're gonna do is hop on a one-on-one -on -one call with a specialist, maybe it's like a copywriter or like a something like that, to where they're gonna finalize it, okay? Now, I've seen this type of thing in multiple different programs, and when somebody comes in, they have kind of their idea of what their product or service is, but then you're, you help them repackage it in a way that has more compelling pricing, more compelling terms, and overall is just more compelling to the customer in the market. That is a huge momentum shift and a big, um, a big sense of clarity that the client gets because of it. So that would be the first thing. Then after that, activation point two is let's say ads launched. So let's say in this example, this salon coach his, his or her strategy is helping uh, the salons really develop a good acquisition system through Facebook ads. Let's just say that's what it is. So in this case, after call number one, the person on call number one assigns them more homework, which is in the course content, to be able to basically import a click funnel into their account, change all the copy and images so it's brand specific to them, and then book another one-on-one -on -one with a tech specialist that basically sets their ads up on the call, teaches them how to manage it, and presses go. Right, so it's not pure done for you, but there is kind of a little bit of a done for you thing to where you're kind of forcing them to do that next thing. Because you know when they do this, what's gonna happen next, customers are gonna come in the door, right? Then that leads us to activation point three, which means activation point three, you got customers walking through the door, really the only thing you have to do to get them to a point that they're a raving fan and customer, at least in this example, let's say, is um, get them prepped to be able to enroll and have the right sales process to enroll all these new customers coming in into clients, okay? And there could be some steps in between here, like I'm not a salon coach, guys, so I, I just kind of made this up on the spot. Maybe the, the third activation point is actually getting the people to show up. Maybe that's a big thing. Maybe the fourth activation point then is validating the sales process. But you, what I'm saying here, once the person has people coming in the door, they're actually showing up, and they're confident with their sales process, they're closing consistently, we really got them that first result, which was probably just a more consistent acquisition system that they can pull the lever, get clients coming in at will, right? Now, guess what they're gonna be ready to do? One, they'll probably wanna leave a testimonial, case study, a review, whatever, and they're more likely to upsell, retain, and move on to maybe a back-end offer that solves the next problem, whether that's fulfillment, team, systems, whatever.
okay? So now that we know this client journey process, how does the CSM fit in? Well, the CSM is the person who's gonna be kind of moving them throughout the entire thing. Therefore, they are KPI'd on all of these activation points. So within our organization, we have all of these mapped out within our offer and our client journey. And every single day, we have a daily huddle with the CSM team where we go down every single CSM and we basically go through how many accounts do they have? How many people did they get through the onboarding? How many people are at activation point one, two, and three? And you can see as they're moving slowly, all their clients kind of through the funnel, so to speak. And the ultimate kind of activation point at the very, very end is an upsell or a retention to where essentially this process starts all over again because now they're moving on to a new, deeper, more expensive backend offer, okay? So we kind of run essentially our CSM team very, very much like we run our sales teams, okay? It's all outcome-based. We obviously wanna make sure the client's are getting through all of the activation points because before they're gonna buy anything else, they have to get the result. We have to fulfill on their promise. But once we do, we can upsell them into the next thing, okay? Now, a few questions I get commonly about CSMs. How many clients can a CSM facilitate at once? Short answer, depends. For very high touch, like B2B, kind of complex problems, 40 to 60 on the low end. Uh, for lower touch B2C, I've seen as high as 80 to 120, okay? Uh, a great place to start as a rule of thumb is about 80. And I would say the exception here is if you run like a very done for you offer, like you're a done for you agency, you might hear 80 and you're like, dude, you're insane. And I would agree. Um, it's gonna be definitely lower. It could be 40, 50. I mean, I've seen as low as 20, but I think at that low of a rate, you may have to restructure your fulfillment to get more leverage because I just think it's gonna be hard to scale with that amount of labor cost. But it also depends on your pricing. So anyways, how many clients, especially coaching, consulting, agency, kind of hybrid done for you world, 80 is a great rule of thumb. Um, important distinction here about expert CSMs versus not facilitator, but we call these connector CSMs, okay? So, very important distinction. And there's kind of two types of CSMs and you're gonna hire one of these depending on what you do. So there's kind of the experts and the connectors, okay? Experts, essentially, the way to think about this, an expert CSM can answer 80% of any problem, concern, or question that the client has. Okay, so they're like the sole go, like, you know, you go to this person for everything. And every once in a while, they're gonna have to maybe go to the owner or go to somebody else, their, their lead or whatever, to get some insight. But 80% of the time, they can just answer everything. Okay, so um, a lot of times in organizations, an expert CSM also is gonna be doing group calls, one on one coaching calls. I mean, it's gonna be like they're the main point. And all my organizations run off of expert CSMs. But it's not feasible in every organization, which is why we have connector CSMs. And connector CSMs can maybe answer 20% of the questions a prospect has, but their main role is kind of to be the lazy on and the connector between the client and all of the resources that are inside of the program, okay? So for example, let's say your program looks like this. There's five group coaching calls a week. There's sales, ads, offers, mindset, and team, right? So there's a group coaching call based on sales, one based on ads, offers, mindset, and then one group, co co group coaching call based on like hiring, training team, leading teams, et cetera. So it's kind of topic based. Okay, and let's say this program is about uh, scaling your SaaS business, okay? So you're gonna have course content that also covers all five of these areas. And if your CSM is a connector CSM, they're not gonna be an expert at all of these things. Like if you have a company that teaches uh, SaaS founders how to get to five to 10 million ARR from 10 to 20K a month is kind of the, the minimum starting point it's gonna be hard to bring on a set of coaches that are all well-rounded enough to deal with every single problem that's gonna come across a SaaS founder's plate in an effort to get from, you know, 100 grand, 100 grand a year, which is basically 10K a month MRR, all the way to, you know, five to 10 million a year. Does that make sense? It's gonna be hard to find somebody who's qualified enough and will fit within the CSM pay model who's gonna be able to answer all of that client's questions. So what you have to do is you have to bring in a multitude of different specialized experts. So one on sales, one on ads, one on offers, one on mindset, one on team. And then your connector CSM is a lazy on between the client and all of those different people. 
they're the main point of contact. So what's gonna happen is, instead of the, you know, the CSM still might be able to answer 20% of questions, but 80% of the time he's gonna be like, hey, let me just set you on a, on a group call with so-and-so on Thursday. Hey, I think the best thing to do would be to get on a one-on-one -on -one call with this person. Hey, based on what you told me, here's three resources in the program. Can you go through these, fill out the action items, send them back to me, I'll have X, Y, and Z coach review. Okay, so as you can see, right now the, CS, the connector CSM isn't viewed as like the expert, but they're viewed as the type of person who's just a lazy on between the client and all the resources that they have. Okay, typically like the SaaS one's a great example. Like if, if you help people go from 100K a year to um, you know, 10 million a year, I'm just making stuff up in SaaS, it's gonna be hard to find a CSM who is, wants to accept CSM pay, who has the skill set to help somebody get from there to there. But a great example of somebody who could do an expert CSM is let's say you just have a program, like let's just theoretically say you just had a program that only teaches sales. Well then I mean, all you gotta bring in is people who are good at sales, okay? Or I've seen programs where you teach somebody wholesaling. Well a lot of people, you know, they'll get into the program, they'll wholesale their first deals, but they kind of like the full-time income, like a six-figure income, alongside what they're trying to do with their wholesaling business. And it's one key skill set. so that's another example. But you just kind of have to decide, usually the more B2B and more complex it gets, you go the connector route, but if it's sort of a single uh, skill set that they're building, maybe it's just a program only on ads, then you can probably find like a media buyer or an ads guy who wants that full-time salary in addition to the ads work that he's doing part-time or whatever it is. So hopefully that makes sense. Um, I will say expert CSMs, it is more effective. It's just nice to have that central go-to person. It's just sometimes it's not feasible. Now, really important, let's talk about the difference between homogenous and non-homogenous markets. And this is critical when you build out your client journey. You have to understand if you're in a homogenous market or a non-homogenous market, okay? A homogenous market means that every client that's enrolled starts off at the same point every single time and has the same goal every single time, okay? The beauty salons is a great, a great example. If you're taking on, let's say, beauty salons with a brick and mortar office with at least X amount of employees, all of them wanna get new customers, they're all in a local area, they're all gonna do it through Facebook ads, like, every, like everything is just gonna be the same, right? It's just copy, paste, copy, paste. Everybody's running the same playbook. Does that make sense? A lot of local businesses, they almost all fall into this. Um, also, if you have a certain like biz op, let's say you teach people how to do Amazon FBA, you're also in a homogenous market. As long as everybody's starting off as a complete beginner, they never started, okay? Because everybody's complete beginner, they gotta what, you know? do research, find their product, test their product, get traffic to it, et cetera. I'm not an Amazon expert, but every single person's kind of gonna have the same journey, so to speak. Now let's talk about non-homogenous markets. So this means you're gonna have clients coming in at different points with different problems with different goals. So a great example, our sales team accelerator, um, we have clients who come in who are, you know, at the very, very low end, maybe 30K a month, 40K a month, 50K a month, that kind of range, uh, our top client does 1.5 billion a year. So they have a variety of different issues. I mean, some clients wanna build outbound setting teams. Some wanna build SDR teams. Some wanna build MDR teams. Other people wanna increase the sales performance of their current team or their current setting team. Others wanna hire a sales manager so they can remove themselves from the sales process and have the sales division running on autopilot without them. Some need to hire their very first sales rep ever and they've never had anything, you know, they don't know anything. Some need a total script rebuild. Some need you know, a revamp of their entire systems. It just really depends. Like, there's so many clients that come in with such a wide variety of problems and also a wide variety of goals. So. That offer, which was what we have, is a great example of a non-homogenous market, okay? Like I can't create a cookie cutter thing for every single person, like you could a beauty salon. I wish I could, but I can't. So what do you do? Here's what you do. And this is very, um, it, 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 the, the thing is, it's just more difficult to figure out, but um, if you do, it does work very effectively. Is what you wanna do is create three to five buckets that clients kind of fall into, because what you're gonna find is most of the clients come in, they are gonna fall, if, if you are in a non-homogenous market, they fall within three to five categories, okay? Like for us, um, you have the setter teams people wanna build out, you have people who wanna hire their first rep, optimize the current, current performance of their team, 
or get training for their sales management or hire a sales manager. I would say those are the main four, maybe I'm forgetting one or two, but there you go. Like it's, it's pretty cut and dry that it usually falls within those four or five things, okay? So you wanna take those four to five buckets and you essentially you're creating a client journey uh, for every single one of those. So instead of one client journey, you're essentially going to have three to five, okay? And so with all of these, um, we really follow the same exact structure. They're gonna get onboarded the same, they'll have the same onboarding call. On that onboarding call, typically what you're gonna do is take the intake information and then decide which bucket or track they're gonna go down. And sometimes they're going through multiple different tracks and that just is what it is. And so we call that mapping out their implementation pathway. Then we know the activation points and we can hold them accountable and push them through the process. Um, but this is just a crucial distinction. You have to know you have those three to five buckets three to five implementation pathways, and then a way to organize that and hold your CSMs accountable to leading people through that process. So how much do CSMs get paid? Um, if it's just coaching and leading through the activation points, five to eight K a month is a general range. You could probably go as low as four, I've seen sometimes. Um, and you could also you know, just pay a straight base with that, or you could do 5K a month, and then you could kind of tier bonus them based on how well they get their people to the activation points, that's up to you. Um, not one right way to do it, but that's kind of the typical on track earning range I see. Now, if they're doing the coaching and leading clients through stuff and um, they're doing upsells, the ceiling's gonna be much bigger. And that's basically because now they've really become your inside salespeople, all right? So here you wanna do a base plus commission. So very standard in my books, and I think this is a good one that um, has worked for us and I've seen work for other companies, is 5K a month plus five to 8% of backend upsells, which can put the on-track earnings at anywhere between eight to 15 grand a month, okay? And this is if they're selling themselves. Now, in some cases, the CSM doesn't have the sales skill set. So while they might not actually be closing the person, what they can really act like is a setter to set the, cl set the client for the account executive, the closer, what have you, and then the closer can reclose them into the back end. Okay, and in that example, you could do anywhere from one to 3% and the on-track earnings is maybe eight to 10K a month. Now, all of these numbers here totally depend on your market, okay? So I wouldn't get super hung up in terms of, you know, these, these example figures that I'm giving you. This is stuff that we've used in our business successfully, but we're different from everybody else and your company's also different from everybody else. So think for yourself here and really think of like, what is a fair market wage for what I'm asking this person to do? And then align the on-track earnings with that, then reverse out, reverse engineer out the comp structure. Okay, a good example is, in, in my experience, health and fitness coaches, you can get way cheaper, dating coaches, you can get way cheaper than let's say somebody who, um, is extremely good, you know, they've launched six SaaS companies and, and they're really good at, you know, getting product market fit for um, SaaS companies, right? Like that person, if they're gonna be on full time for you, I mean, that's gonna be, they probably wouldn't be full time for you, but if they were, you know, that'd be a huge wage, right? Or somebody who's a sales specialist or a sales trainer, if they're full time for you, they're gonna demand higher on track earnings and let's say a dating coach or a health coach who's really passionate about this stuff, but can't get clients, right? So keep that in mind here. Now, in terms of upsells and retention, um, this is the biggest opportunity for your CSMs, is having them help facilitate, whether it's a setter or kind of a closer model like we covered above, your front and the back end conversion and retention. So, um, and the bonus of this is if it's done correctly, especially if they're closing themselves, but even if they're a setter, they're kind of booking their own book of business here. Or they're kind of selling into their own book of business and growing it. So we have our guys, for instance, they're able to sell their own deals as long as they get it from referrals. So they're getting their book of business and their main mechanism in terms of lead generation for their book, our CSMs, is generating referrals, which gets new flow to come in. Then we get more referrals from that. And so we're getting an exponential organic growth there which has been very effective for us. So let's look at an example here just to drive home the point of how important front end to back end conversion is. And in the high ticket world, it's something that uh, candidly, not very many people do well. And when you can do it well, you have a massive advantage you're gonna see. So let's say you price your back end offer at 2X the price, 2X the time. So for an example, your front end offers 10K, three month contracted. That means your back end is 20K, six month contract, right? 2x the time, 2x the price. Now, why do we do it like that? Because essentially, contract length 
has to do with trust. So the longer we work with somebody, the more trust that's built, the longer we'll usually be able to get into a contract with them, okay? That's why the 90 days to cold traffic, it's there for a reason, right? Two months to 90 days, four months, that kind of time frame works really well for new customers and in terms of high ticket programs. Um, the reason we do 2X the price is because essentially, usually people, they buy based on what the monthly payment is. Even if it's a pay in full thing, they think about it like, oh, it's, you know, so it's 90 days, it's this price. Okay, it's kind of like this a month. Okay, that's how everybody thinks of stuff. And to drive this home, if you look at how you buy a house, how you buy a car, you're never really looking at the purchase price. You're looking at the monthly payment and can you afford the monthly payment? So the reason we do 2X the price, 2X the time is because 10K for three months versus 20K for six months is still 33, 33 a month on average. Does that make sense? And so typically if we know they bought in at that front end, front end purchase price, we know they're likely going to ascend or at least the pricing won't be an issue for them ascending into the back end because it's just the same monthly payment, right? And if you even want to get even better with this, um, if you really over deliver on the front end, then what you can do is you have more trust so you can elongate the contract. Maybe not, now it's a nine month contract, okay? Three, three X the time, and then you, you lower the monthly payment essentially, okay? So it's still a bigger contract value. It's still a bigger deal, but instead of 33, 33, maybe now it's 2750. Okay, hopefully that makes sense, but essentially you're decreasing their monthly payment, so they're kind of getting a discount, they're gonna feel like, but you're locking them in for a longer contract. That's a really good way to do it as well. So, given this example, 2X the price, 2X the time on a 10K offer, if you convert 50% of front-end customers to back-end, you double your business. I'll repeat, if you can convert 50% of your front-end customers from front-end to back-end at 2X the price, 2X the time, you double your company. Okay, and now you double your company, by the way, without spending any more money on ads or more money on any sort of front-end acquisition. Remember that front-end acquisition is the most expensive acquisition part of your business. You know, the back-end customers you're getting to pay you again and again or pay you larger amounts, et cetera, or pay you more often, that's a lot cheaper for you to generate than new front-end cold customers. Okay, so these, it's, it's doubling your revenue, but it's also even more than gonna be doubling your profitability, okay? So you have to think about this stuff. Now, 50%, I won't lie, that's good. I, I've hit this metric before, and uh, we hover around there. We're probably at 40 to 45% front and the back end conversion. Uh, we'll float up and get a good month at 50 every once in a while. Uh, 50 is very, very, very good. If you're above 50 for a high ticket service, business, coaching type program, um, that is exceptional. But even if you were, let's say, at 20 to 30% front and the back end conversion, which is very doable, that's 40 to 60% increase in revenue in your bottom line. So that's huge, okay? Also, think about from an acceptable CPA, really getting to an eight-figure scale level is about being able to spend more on ads than your competitors, right? And being able to spend more to acquire the same customer than your competitors can. Well, if you knock out this 50% front and the back end conversion, you're increasing your LTV from 10K to 20K, effectively doubling your cost per um, acceptable CPA, essentially. So a lot of people, they're talking about targeting and creative and all these things that go good at ads. Like, look, like there's a whole art and science to that. Don't neglect it, it's important. But if you just have a really high LTV and you, can, you have an extremely high acceptable CPA, uh, all that stuff almost becomes irrelevant because you just kind of cancel everything out. You can beat somebody who's better at ads than you just simply by better, having better economics, okay? So anyways, guys, that's it for this training. Sorry for the technical difficulty. If you want the sales process that we use to convert front-end to back-end customers, then um, you can find it here. It's linked in this document. This links to a video training. It's like an hour-long training uh, basically about how we take a front-end customer and prep them for the upsell and then how the actual call goes. So the upsell script, everything, uh, really valuable training. I just gave away a lot for free. And so I wanted to uh, link that here. So if you guys want this, um, I forget the term now, I think it was two keys. So comment two keys below, you'll get this document. And then inside of this document, not only you have all this information, but you'll have this link to that training for the backend upsell this process as well. So comment two keys below now and you'll get that and I'll see you guys in the next video.